What's going on smart people? We're bringing you another coding video today and today I'm going to show you how to find the zeros of functions in Python two different ways. One way using the bisection method where we're going to develop the algorithm and then implement it. It's going to take a little bit of time. And the second way at the end of the video is just going to be a really fast library import and have it do all the heavy lifting for us. So if you just need to solve a problem really quick, just skip to this part of the video. So we're going to kick things off with the bisection method, but before we get started, I want to motivate why it makes sense first. The bisection method works when you've established an interval in between which you know there must be a root. So what I'm saying is if there's some point A and B that we're bounding our function by, we know somewhere in between there, F evaluated at that point must be zero. Uh, so if we take some sample function, say it looks something like that, I'm saying we know for certain, so here's where our zero actually is, I'm saying we know for certain that in between A and in between some point B, we know that there's a zero somewhere in here. We can also talk about the halfway point in between this, which in our case would be about right here that we're going to call C, in which case, well, C, its location is just going to be A plus B over 2. Okay. The whole magic with the bisection method works best if you can establish an interval where you know there's only one root in between. It doesn't have to be, but it's, it's easier, at least for me to picture, if there's one root in between. Because then when we consider something like, what is f of a times f of c? Well, let's look at it here. If we think of f of a times f of c, here's f of a, here's f of c. Both of these values are going to be negative. What that tells us, if since we're saying, we're assuming that there's no other roots, there's only one root on this interval, if both of these are negative, or if both of these were positive, that means at no point did it cross the x-axis. And that tells us that the root has to be in between C and B. Since we're saying it has to be in between here, and it's not in between here, then it has to be in between C and B. So if f of A times f of C is greater than zero, because it could be both positive or both negative, then the root is on the interval C to B, which is telling us that we're shifting A to be the new uh, C. A goes to C. Similarly, if we were to have F of A times F of C being less than zero, I mean one positive, one negative, then that tells us that the root is on a to C, right? If one of these was positive and say our function was something like this, where this is our interval B, this is our interval A, this is still our C, but this is now our function. Now here, F of A is going to be negative and here, F of C is going to be positive, which means at some point in between, it crossed the X axis. So if we know that it's in between A and C, then B becomes the new C. So the root is on A and C, B becomes the new C. And if f of A times f of C is equal to zero, well then that means that where C is must be where the root is. And this is an iterative process because we keep making this interval narrower and narrower as we change definitions from B to go to C and A to go to C and so forth, such that the difference between A and B, or let's call it the magnitude uh, of A minus B, as we keep, um, actually it's absolute value, is eventually going to be equal to zero. And at this point is where the root must be. Now when you're writing this in a coding context, we're not actually going to be saying zero. We're going to have to establish some kind of tolerance. But this is the general way that this algorithm works. OK, let's get to the coding. I've already imported the necessary libraries because that is where I typically make my typos. So I wanted to have it done here. But let me just uh, let me talk about it while you guys write it in the code. First line, matplotlib inline, is to make sure plots don't pop out of the screen because I'm using Jupyter Notebook. NumPy is so that I can use arrays. Matplotlib is self-explanatory. Scipy.optimize import solve. fsolve is going to be the function that's going to be like one line long at the very end that takes care of everything that we did or that we're about to do in a line. So that's, that's why I said that you can skip to that part if you don't really care about the algorithm. But let's go ahead and get started. So we're, let's define a function that we want to find a zero of. So define f of x. Uh, let's return. Let's return. We drew like a cubic looking function in the example. So let's let's go ahead and stick with that. x cubed. Let's do plus one or something. 
Let's go ahead and define our bisection method now. And the parameters that we're going to end up passing it are going to be the interval that we are sure the root is within, so A and B, as well as the tolerance, what we're willing to accept as an answer. Tolerance, because you can't just say if it equals zero, it's never going to actually equal zero. Okay, and uh, since A and B are going to be shifting, one's going to be coming uh, like a new C and so on for the other one, let's go ahead and create variables that are going to be changing. So XL can equal A and XR can equal B. Uh, let's see, so while, while what? This interval is going to be dividing smaller and smaller intervals. At some point, we need to say, if the interval is that small, that's got to be where the root is. So while np.abs, because we're looking at the length of it, as long as the length is larger than our tolerance, so the absolute value of xl minus xr is greater than or equal to the tolerance, then carry out this code. Uh, so let's define our c variable now. C is equal to XL plus XR divided by 2.0. And now we just need to implement our cases. If that product that we talked about earlier is positive or if it's negative. Since we're going to be using that product twice, let's go ahead and just create a variable for that. So it's going to be F of XL times F of C. And now let's do the cases. If the product is greater than um, the tolerance, then what? Well, if it's greater than the tolerance, that means that product has to be positive, which means that they both have to be on the same side of the x-axis, which means that we are not going to be finding any roots in between there. So we should shift our a value. So that means uh, a, or xl, is equal to c. Else, if um, the product is less than the tolerance, then xr is equal to c. Right, because that means that it crosses the x-axis at some point. And then at the very end of this, let's return, um, let's return c so that we can see what it is. We can say our answer is equal to bisection. Okay, now we need to feed it some intervals. So let's go, let's be safe, let's go from minus five to five. Tolerance of 1 e to the minus 8 and print bisection method gives root at x equals comma answer. Run this code, invalid syntax, f of xl. Oh, I didn't write a, an equal sign here. There's always, there's always one typo at minus one, so pretty much one, at pretty much one, minus one. If we make this a little bit larger, minus 10, so two orders of magnitude, we get even closer. So it takes about two orders of magnitude, it looks, to get an order of magnitude better an estimate. That's because the C, each time we divide the interval by a factor of two, so it takes sort of two of those to get an order of magnitude. Okay, so cool. So that works. Let's uh, let's double check. Let's plot this graph out to make sure around x equals minus one is where we're expecting it to be. So let's uh, create some x values. So x equals np dot lin space. Let's go from minus five to five, hundred points. Plt dot plot x comma f of x. Let's add some grid lines. Plt dot show. Okay. This might be zoomed out a little bit too much. Yeah, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go from minus two to two. Okay, so if we scroll over to minus one, we see that it intersects at x equals, or at y equals zero, sorry. So that works, it gave us a reliable answer. So that was the bisection method. Like I said, this is super useful if you know that there's no other intervals, or no other, no other roots in between that interval, but it will still find, it'll still find an answer. Uh, it's just hard to tell which root it will find. So it's more useful, I think, if you can specify that there's only one root. Uh, for example, if we were to take, say, x squared minus 
2, we know that it's going to have two roots, right? It's going to cross the x-axis twice. So if we plot this out, here's 0, so we see it crosses there and it crosses right here. And the bisection method found the, the smaller one. It found the one at minus 1.4, which is about right here. So that works. It works. Okay. Uh, now we're going to skip to the, the faster way, this fsolve library, or this scipy.optimize, this whole function. There we go. Uh, and we're going to see how it finds it. And it's super easy to use. So we can go ahead, we'll name this, say, the shortcut or something. The shortcut is equal to fsolve. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at what's inside this function. So we'll import inspect, and then we'll do a equals uh, inspect dot get arg spec, and uh, this will be fsolve. That way we can see what kind of arguments it takes in, and then we'll print this. And we see that it takes in the function that you want to find the zero of, some value x0, and a whole bunch of other stuff. f prime, which tells you that this uses derivatives, which is actually important to know because not all functions have uh, derivatives that you can evaluate at all points, which is where being able to use something like bisection method, which is robust enough to be able to handle pretty much anything, it just converges pretty slowly. Um, so it's nice to have two different styles. And then it also has a tolerance, which it says is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8. Now this x0 is actually your guess. It's where you think the root is. Uh, so what's cool about this x0 is that it's actually an array, which means if you have a function that has multiple roots, you can have as many guesses as you have roots, and it'll try to find all of them. So we have a function here that has two roots, so let's give it two guesses. So let's get rid of this and say shortcut or something equals fsolve. The function we want to find the zeros of is our function f here. Sorry for the abrupt change of scenery, I had to relocate. But as I was saying, this is our function f that we're evaluating here and that we need to give it two guesses. So based off of the bisection, we're kind of going to cheat a little bit. We know it's around like minus 1.5 and 1.5. So if we put a list here of minus 1.5 Actually, was it one point? It's 1.4. So we'll say 1.5 and 1.5. Let's see how good it can get. So print uh, fsolve gives root at x equals comma shortcut. Okay. And it found both of them. So that's pretty cool, right? And uh, since it's, pat or it's, it's giving us back a list, we could say something like fsolve gives first root, first root, shortcut, zero. In which case, it'll just give us the first one that matches up with this pretty much perfectly. So that's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and test to see how good your guess has, has to be. That's the, pretty much the only downside to using fsolve, as well as the fact that you know, the whole derivative thing. So if we get a little bit crazy with our guess, we say something like minus 5, will it still be able to find that 0? I think it will. I think it will. It'll just take more function evaluations. But I think there's a cap anyways. And it still was able to find it. So that's good. Still able to find it. That's good. Uh, I'm talking about function evaluations now. If, um, if you're interested in seeing how many function evaluations it took or how many iterations it took for bisection method, we could initialize some count, i equals 1, and at the end of each we could say i plus equals 1, i plus equals 1, return i comma c, in which case answer gives a root at x equals answer, that's going to be 1, because this is going to return uh, a list of two numbers, i and c, print iterations equals, or let's just say iterations, comma, answer, zero. Here we can see that it took 31 iterations for uh, the bisection method to find this root. And, you know, do with that as you will. Sometimes if you see that it's converging super slowly, like if your iterations goes into like the hundreds or something, that could be a sign that you want to use a different 
faster algorithm, something that might use derivatives or so, because those are typically faster, but like I said, if your function doesn't always have derivatives there, it could be pretty slow. But that's going to do it for this video. I, I always like using fsolve whenever I need to find multiple roots, but if I'm just interested in finding one and then factoring an equation or something afterwards, then it's nice to just know how the algorithm works, right? Because then it's yours to use in the future. Hope you guys found this video helpful, a little bit useful. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.